Hey, Rent to Retires, it's Adam Schrader here with another episode, joined as usual by the founder and CEO of Rent to Retirement, Zach Lee Master. And we are joined today by David Richter. He is the founder and owner of Simple CFO. And we're going to dive into his story a little bit and also how real estate investors can uh, successfully and legally um, run their, their businesses. So David, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thanks, Adam. I'm excited to be here. So let's start off with your real estate journey because you have invested in real estate and to the point where people don't know you've actually been on the Bigger Pockets podcast, which a lot of our uh, listeners also follow. So tell us a little bit about where you started out as a real estate investor. Read Rich Dad Poor Dad in college. So that was the end of that, thinking any other way. Uh, so bought my first house in 2012. And then what took me further on the journey was I linked up with a company where they were doing about five wholesale deals a month. And we scaled that company to about 25 deals a month. So I've been a part of a lot of transactions, like over 800 deals just with that company. While I was there, we scaled about, like I said, 25 deals at 300 deals a year. Sounds like a lot of deals, but when you're doing 25 deals a month, but spending 26 worth, it sucks. So it's like, who cares if you make a million, if you spend 1.1. So that's what really opened my eyes to that. It doesn't really matter how much you're doing if you don't have a good back end and knowing where exactly where all the money's going. And that's where that took me on a on a much needed journey of diving into, okay, is it just us? Is it other people going to other masterminds and events and, you know, meetup groups? And a lot of people were in the same boat. They were making money but feeling broke just like us. So that was like encouraging to discouraging to me. Like it was encouraging because like, hey, I'm not alone here. Like there's other people in this predicament. But then it was discouraging because it's like this is a freaking epidemic. Like everyone feels like this. Like if you're going to make money, then on the back end, a lot of people are just feeling like, where did it all go? You know, like, I, I don't understand. And that's where we were in that same boat. And that's what took me from real estate and really active in that, where I sold everything to start this business, Simple CFO, because I wanted to help people just have a grasp on their numbers, like just to know where the money's going, how to be able to keep more of it. And that's where I helped an investor that was a friend of mine in the Richmond, Virginia area, just get some clarity in his business. Like what were the numbers? What was he making, spending, keeping like simple stuff? And like he said, it was life changing for him because he could make better decisions, keep more money in his pocket, actually pay himself from his business. And I'm like, okay, that's the real springboard to simple CFO. Cause then I knew I could do it. So that's how I got into what I'm doing today, but it's been a journey for sure, because it's like went from doing real estate full time to now I'm like, making sure that the real estate investors and the people you work with not only can make the money because a lot of them have that skill, but also teaching them the skill of keeping it too, of like the day to day, how do you manage the cash? That's where I also got introduced to profit first as well during that time, that book. And that's where I went down that rabbit hole, started implementing that, that cash flow methodology. That's where I even got on bigger pockets because I wrote profit first for real estate investing. So that's how I got on there because of writing that book and trying to get that concept out to people and a simple framework. So no matter if you're zero properties to one, pro you know, to 10 properties or a, a thousand properties in, it's like got to get some good habits in place with your money. So that there's a high level overview of my journey, real estate, and then what I'm doing today. David, um, thank you for, for that background. Um, that's, that's extraordinary. Um, love everything you said. It's, we all know that, uh, it's not how much you make, it's how much you keep. And then I usually go a step further and say, and then also how much you pay in taxes is how much you truly keep. But, yeah, um, you know, that, that's just interesting. So you've helped a lot of people um, build their business and expand their business and actually be conscious of like proper accounting and tracking. And this is one thing I found and, and personally, too. But I mean, a lot of entrepreneurs, real estate investors, business owners, all those are the same thing. Um, you know, when you're building your business, whatever it is, it's almost like you're focused on sales and marketing and then staffing. And it's almost like, you know, proper accounting and financing takes a back seat to that. And then it's kind of your, well, I, I know so many business owners and real estate investors that are just focused on like the front end business. Um, but yeah, they're, they just have no idea on the back end. Right. And so, but that's, that's very important. And sometimes that's a later step because you just don't like, it's just not a priority, but it probably should be, I like your opinion, but it probably should be one of the higher opinions of like, is what I'm doing like actually making sense, right? Because no one wants to spin their wheels and work 90 hours a week to build a business and yeah, not have anything to show for it, right? I mean, that's that's really challenging. Do you have a, in, in college, do you have an accounting background or like how did you get into this space where you're 
you know, just interested in the numbers. A lot of people just don't even like paying attention to the finances because they would consider boring, right? So, I mean. Right. So for me, I totally look like the typical bookkeeping account in person. I have zero background in it. I own a company that has 40 CFOs, 150 clients we're working with, and I have no financial background whatsoever. No CPA license, no accounting background, not a bookkeeper. Not I don't even like QuickBooks. Like I'm the typical entrepreneur. But that's where this whole concept appealed to me. Profit First spoke to me when I read it because it was built for the business owner. Because so many people, they don't like the back end and the numbers because they think there's this huge knowledge gap. Because the freaking bookkeepers and accountants out there set themselves up on this pedestal as God as they're the only ones that know how to really do this stuff. And like it's so untouchable that everyone that's a business owner thinks, I'll just give it to my bookkeeper CPA, they'll take care of it, and then I could just move on. Where as a business owner, you're going to manage the cash. You're, it's going to come in and you're going to tell it where to go every single day. You're going to be working on that and like, oh, here's a new expense or here's a new thing I need or a person I need to hire, whatever it might be. So what took me down this road was I knew there had to be a simpler answer than I need to become this great bookkeeper or financial guru or this CPA and have all these credentials behind me. And that's where I think even without that background, it's probably helped me more, reach more people because I am. It did. It, it resonated with me. It rang my internal bell when I read Profit First of that knowledge gap is a lot shorter. I just need a system to manage the cash as it comes in. I need to know if I make a dollar, where do I put it to be most effective? in the business so that way I'm not running out of cash because at the end of the day, most people really don't care about the profit and loss and balance sheet and all that. Now, we can teach you how to be good stewards of that and to read those, but at the end of the day, they care about how much money they put in their pocket of like, how much am I taking home? Is this really worth it? Is the 90 hours you know, plus that I'm working in the hustle grind season you know, like worth all this headache? That's where I got into this with no background to be able to say, yes, it's possible, it's doable, and I'll freaking build a company that, of people that will help you with like these first steps and getting finance 101 in your business and like helping you keep more right out of the gate. And that's where it really took hold of me. And now I do like people say, well, do you think you should ever go back to school and like get these? And I'm like, no, I think it would hurt me more than help me, <laughs> you know, like at this point. So I'm like, I want to. I want to build a team that has all those credentials and stuff. And like, that's great. But like, as far as you, the owner, you don't need to go back to school for accounting. We just need to translate what most CPAs and bookkeepers speak, the accountantees that they speak. And we translate it into business owner and like making sure you actually know what's going on. So no, I don't have a background and I believe that's helped me more than hurt me. But at the beginning, I definitely had imposter syndrome starting a, a fractional CFO company up front. And was like, oh, crap, Am I really? can I really do this? And then years later, like with all the people we're helping and all the stuff out there and the book and everything, it's like people are craving this because it's like it was it's closed the knowledge gap. They thought they had to go from business owner, making the money, doing deals and doing all that stuff to I've got to be this financial wizard. And it's like, no, it's it's a lot shorter knowledge base and a lot quicker implementation than you think to get a system for your finances. So do you see whenever business owners come to you and you start helping them, is there like a, like a whole lot that they need to change to become successful? Or is it really that people are missing just one or two little steps that change everything? I mean, when we, when we walk through with people, it's hilarious because they're like, where was this 10 years ago? Because I wish I would have implemented this right from the get go. Like when I was small, when I would have like zero to 10 properties or something, because it is such a short gap for at least the things that matter up front. When you implement Profit First, Profit First is a cash flow system. It's based on the formula sales minus profit equals expenses, meaning I make a sale, I take my profit off the table first, expenses are left over. But if you're in real estate, you've heard that before. If you've read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, how many times does Robert Kiyosaki say, pay yourself first there? You know, and it's like the richest man in Babylon, a portion of all I have is ours to keep. And like all these books, the first things first in the seven habits, right? It's like we've heard the message of profit first before, and it's a principle of life. But like profit first, what showed to me was it's not just words anymore on a page. Here's a system to put in place where it's these small tweaks. Literally, we're just trying to make profit a habit in these businesses of where it's a repeatable process. A dollar comes in. I know what to do with it. I know where how much should go towards marketing. I know how much should go towards the expenses. I know how much should go towards paying myself and for taxes in the future so I can have peace of mind when tax time comes. It's like we're just giving them a simple system to input up front so it's a much shorter gap than 
what most, like I said, what most people think like, oh man, I got to read the PL and the balance sheet and I've got to do all these ratios and, you know, all this different type of stuff. It's like, well, no. First things we have to do is you're already managing your cash. It's probably just poorly. It's probably you've got one big bank account. All the money comes in, all the money goes out. You got that black hole account and you're like, what's in there? Like, can I take money out? I've got money today. Great. I'll spend it. I don't have money today. Oh boy. I better do, you know, sit on it and not use anything. So that's where it's like, it's a much smaller gap than people think. And that's where people hear profit first in the implementation. And they're like, man, I've already heard something like this. So it's like, I would say it's much shorter gap than most people realize. I, um, thank you for explaining what profit first kind of like the concept is. Obviously, yeah. if people want to you know dive in deeper, they can read the book and then read your book, obviously specific to real estate investors. Um, what is, I, is this, I mean, I think obviously these concepts applied it to any business, right? It sounds like yep. a lot of who you've worked with, at least initially, maybe in those, those first references you mentioned were like house flippers. Like that was their, their business. But I think a lot of this, like a lot of our audience are just building a portfolio that's intended to be somewhat passive. And yep. when do, and when doing that though, I also think a big mistake that people make is almost being too passive where they're not. They're not paying attention to their managerial statements. For sure. They don't maybe know how to read a PL, which that's that's normal. Like your balance sheet and your PL, like there's a lot going on there. Um, I still don't fully understand all, you know, all the input output data. Uh, that's why you hire the right people to help you. But I think what I'm what I'm asking here though, David, is uh for the, you know, just some actionable steps on like good accounting practices, how to think about um, you know, those, those P and L statements or like, what are some common mistakes you see for a new investor? That's maybe starting a real estate business. That's owning a few rental real, real estate properties and have the property manager, like what are some takeaway steps you'd recommend to them to ensure they're being set up for success and being conscious and knowledgeable about how like performance of their property? Yeah. So that's where we could get into the back end of rental real estate, which sucks. It just does. The P&L balance sheet, you have mortgages, like your different expenses sit on different portions. Some of it, if you have, you know, principal payments, they sit on the balance sheet. If you've got interest payments, they sit on the expense, you know, the profit and loss as expenses. So it's like, I could teach you all that. But at the end of the day, that's where even in my book, I give the difference between if you're selling the property or if you're buying and holding the property, here's how to implement profit first. But honestly, I would say the first thing is, you need to know how much is coming in and going out and how much you want to keep from the properties. Like, why are you buying passive rentals or, you know, like the passive income? How much do you want? First is getting that end goal for yourself. Do you want 5000 a month, 10000 a month? A lot of people make the mistake of just building a business or building portfolio just for the sake of building the portfolio with no end goal. And it's not like that you can't change that end goal. If you get to your first 10, it's not like you have to stop there. It's like, okay, do you want to go to 20? Do you want to double or do you want to 10X it and go to 100? It just depends on your business and what your specific situation is. So I think the one, number one mi biggest mistake is most people just build a uh, business around their hope and pray plan. I hope I make enough pray so there's some left over at some point that I can actually take out of here. Or maybe someday in the future, all these properties will appraise like for crazy, you know, like back in 2020, 2021. And, you know, I could cash out for hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's like, I don't want you building that business around hope and pray plan. It needs to be number one, more around what you need. What do you need from the business? So that way you're not going to these mastermind events or you hear someone like me say, oh, we were doing 25 deals a month or like all this stuff because we were also doing like, you know, rentals and everything at that point too. It's like, I want you to know this is how many I need. Then once you get past that step, it would be implementing a system like Profit First where you actually set up a system for every dollar that comes in. And it's it's real simple. Like I wrote a whole book on it and I give you the step by step, but it's the it's the envelope method for businesses. Like if you've heard the envelope method method in your personal life, like Dave Ramsey's made that super popular, whether you love him or hate him, but he's made it popular in the personal finance side where you literally set up envelopes and you name the dollar certain things like gas, utilities, rent, mortgage, you know, like all that stuff for your personal life and tell every dollar where to go. Well, the same thing for business. Well, you're setting up bank accounts instead of envelopes. So you've got main bank accounts, like here's the ones that are going to help us keep more of the money and the first three profit, owner's cop, owner's tax. Like those three help you keep more. That's where I would say for any business, whether you're big or small, whether you're rental or you're selling the properties or whatever it might be, that's where you set up those first three. They're called the golden trio of accounts. I call them the golden trio in the book. You know why? Because they help you keep more. They're for the owner's benefit. Profit is icing on the cake. 
Owner's Cop is to help you be paid for what you do, the work that you do. So if you are managing the managers and the property managers and you are checking in and you are doing anything with it, you should be paid for it. You're compensated for being the CEO. Then you've got the owner's tax. If you're going to pay taxes, even with your rental real estate, if you're going to pay taxes outside of what you're doing or whatever, make sure you have a little account that some of the money goes in there. But one of the biggest mistakes is most people just don't know how much are they making, spending, keeping. So it's like if you have a system to know how much is coming in, how much did I keep, and how much went out the door, and you can manage it from the bank account level, you're winning. <laughs> you're a lot closer to being able to make better decisions than the people who are just running and gunning it with one big account and don't know anything on the back end with what they're doing. So I think if you just do something like that, get some first things implemented inside the business to be more intentional with every dollar, that's going to take you a lot further then even if you learn how to read the P&L, the balance sheet and all that, that's great. And you need to know that as your business grows and you get past 10 properties and you're going, that is something you need to know as a business owner. When you're first getting started or like when you're first starting out just learning about finance, the first thing to learn is how do I manage the cash that comes in? So that way I don't run out of it. You know how many people we've talked to, they start building a rental portfolio and then they run out of cash even though they've got the rental coming in and they've got all that, but they're using their own cash to fund the properties and then to repair the properties and all this. And it's like they're building a multi-million dollar portfolio and on their way there, but they're running out of cash, which could lead them to bankruptcy. It's like, this is ridiculous. Like you obviously know how to get the properties in, or you can link up with someone who can give you those properties and who can maintain them. But if you run out of cash, game over. <laughs> so who cares? It's like, we got to make sure that cash is being correctly managed and then we can learn all the other stuff, some of the more advanced stuff in the in the back end of real estate. So you talk about the the envelope method, which, you know, like you said, I think pretty much everybody's heard about. But if you were, let's say you've been running your real estate business for a while. Yeah. How do you get started with that? I mean, do you have to look back at the last few months? Because, I mean, if you ask most real estate investors, you know, OK, put money for your mortgage over here, your expenses over here. You know, what percentage is going where they would have no clue where to even start yeah. that. So do you have to go back over the last six months, nine months and see kind of what you're averaging or how do you start that? That's where in the book I give that step-by-step -step of how to analyze that because that is going back of like, here's where you look and that type of thing. But if you want a very general overview, like as you're already, if you're already in the thick of it, you can go back six to 12 months, depends on how long your business has been open, a lot of factors, right? I would say six to 12 months and you're looking back, how much has come in? How much has went out? What did I keep? Like, did I take any for payroll? You're just trying to get very base numbers. Here's how much I made. Here's 100%. Here's my full net of like what came in. Then what went towards expenses? What went towards me and my company, you know, like to be able to put money in my pocket. So you're just getting basic percentages. I spent X, maybe 80, 90%, 95%. And then the rest I just took home or whatever it might've been. But that's where you're just trying to get very base percentages when you first start out. You're just trying to get, okay, where am I? Because then in the book, I give a breakdown of the percentages you should be based on your business size. Like if you're a, a one to $5 million business, that looks a lot different from zero to 250,000. And it's like, what percentages should go into the different bank accounts? So it's like, now you can, if you can get a baseline, which in the book, we call that caps in the profit first world in the terminology, it's called current percentages, current allocation percentages. What are you currently doing when money comes in how much are you spending of what you bring in? And then how much are you keeping of what you bring in? If you can get that base number and an average of what you've done over the last six to 12 months, however long you've been in business and how much data you have, getting those base numbers and then going from there, because then you can say, what's the target? If I'm doing 90% now of what I'm bringing in, but my target is like 60%, I can't cut 30% maybe right away. But next quarter, can I do 5% better? And then the next quarter, can I get a little leaner? And then the next quarter, I can start raising my other percentages where I take it you know, home. So you're just trying to get the baseline. And then from there, okay, well, how close can I get to those targets every single quarter? David, you covered a lot. And I think some people might be, their heads are spitting, just saying, hey, I just, yep. I'm just trying to buy my first rental property. <laughs> you know, but, um, and so I, I just want to call that out though, too, of like, um, if this seems like a lot, like, uh, you know, understand David's just firing through this quickly, right? This is stuff you learn. These are practices you learn over time and you can eventually implement to help you be more conscious about your accounting and also take you to that next level, right? I don't think it'd be realistic for, you know, if you're buying your first rental, like you have to segment, um, you know, six different bank accounts for that, that first rental. That's, that's not what we're saying. What we're saying is that like, these are things that help people really 
build and scale a business. I love what you said about not running out of money. Um, because yeah, there's been a lot of times where, Hey, it's just a little change on a large portfolio can have a dramatic impact. You gotta have your envelope for reserves, right? And you need to make sure that, um, you're, you're setting yourself up for success long-term. So these are great practices for people to really be conscious of and learn about real estate investing is a lifelong journey to learn about as you become a more savvy, savvy business owner. Um, I want to talk about, um, well, let, let me ask this question first. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about like practices. You're, you're giving people all these tools. And of course, again, they can read your book, but you're giving the people all the tools they need to really build a scalable business over time and be successful. Um, I wanted to talk about practices besides the stuff that's, you know, the profit first method. What, what other practices in general have you seen from very successful business owners that they've been implementing? And specifically, I want to ask too, just on the envelope method, uh, how, how much of a percentage do you recommend or do you see people carving away for reinvesting? Those are two different questions. So, which one do you want me to tackle first? Just give me the give me the bullet point on the reinvesting. Like, what do you see? Because in I in like our business, honestly, like because we, we don't need to live off the cash flow at this point. I honestly try to have like ninety percent or greater of my money reinvested from business and rental. Yeah, I usually when I present, I usually tell people if you tell me the word reinvesting, that's a fancy word for I don't know how much is going out, so I'm going to put as much out there. I don't think that's you guys. <laughs> and, well, no, I mean there's there's uh, tr- there's the truth to that too. We always try to buy as much as we- there's some back end like tax strategy with that too, right? right? Like, but we're being extremely aggressive to acquire real estate. And no, I think there is some truth to maybe what you said, but we do we are very aggressive on reinvesting and growing. Yeah, I'm sure we have reserves, but what do you what do you what do you recommend or see? Well, that's where. I was telling you, I would recommend exactly what I put in the book for the different, depending on your business size, the percentage is going to change. So I could pull that up and go through that. But it's like, if you're a million dollar business, then your expenses probably 50, 60%. That's like where, because that's what they really are. Reinvesting is nothing more than you're going to pour back in and it's going to be an expense or it's going to be, you know, like whatever it might be to you, whether that's people, processes, properties, whatever it might, you know, that you're investing in. So that's where there your targets are closer to that point. But then as well, too, like those are just targets. If you're like, I don't need as much money because I've got so much coming in or like it's a huge, you know, it's bigger than a million or whatever it might be. The percentages are what work for you as long as it's intentional. That's where a lot of people just say I'm reinvesting. But it is fancy word for I have no freaking idea what's going on on the back end. I hope we're just making money. And like I'm I think it's around 90 percent because, you know, like we just want to grow the portfolio and want to get, you know, a bunch of properties. And it's like, well, that they're not sleeping well at night at home. You know, it's like, OK, like the the cash is running out. That's where I tell people, OK, these are the targets. This is where you're going to sleep. You're not going to at least worry about do you have money or not. Like that's not going to be your issue. Like, I know that's a lot of people's issue and that's where, can you get to this percentage, you know, like in the, what I give as the targets. So that's where I want you to get closer to that. But it's like, it changes as big, as small or as big as your company is. Cause when you're smaller and you're wanting, let's say you've got the listeners right now, they want to get out of their W2 job and, or they want to get out of their busy, you know, like they want to use passive income to replace what their active income currently is. It's like, okay, what that, what is that goal? And I would I would challenge you a little bit with what you said from deal one. I would set up the bank account. I I want to give you good habits from deal one, so that way you don't get into the position we were in of where we were doing twenty five properties a month but spending twenty six worth. It's like I wish I would have had that when we were only doing one property and like a good solid foundation. Because even though I'm spit firing and like drinking from a fire hose here, it is really simple to set up. Profit first is not it's it's bank accounts. And it is literally doing transfers once a week for 15 minutes. So it's like at the at the actual management portion, it should not take long at all to do, even for your bookkeepers and like the back end people. They mark the stuff in their QuickBooks as transfers. So it's like, I want you to do it from when you're small, because then when you're bigger, you're able to say, OK, do we want to consciously say, I want to do 90 percent and allocate some of our profit and owner's pay percentages to that because we want to be more aggressive right now? That to me is much better than the people who say, well, we're at 90% right now because we're reinvesting, but I don't, you know, that's what we have to do just to stay afloat, you know, and I think that's where we are, but I don't really know. That's why most people lose sleep at night. It's not because they lose money. It's because they don't even know where they stand financially. They don't know how much they're losing or if they're in the black or red. That's where it's like, if you can build those habits from day one 
and just implement some of the base foundation. Like you don't even have to go all in and do all these, do a hundred different bait caps. Just do some of the ones that help you keep more of what you're making. Then when you get to where you are, Zach and Adam, it's like, then it's, then it's intentional. Then 90% is okay with me. If you say I've done it because we've allocated profit percentages and our owners pay because we know we can still do what we want to, to keep, but then we're investing the rest into, you know, the reinvest bucket, which is people processes properties. And like now we're investing in growing the team because we can get to a bigger, you know, a bigger goal. Like we could go from 1 million to 5 million or 5 to 10 million, you know, like as revenue comes in or what it might, whatever it might be. So there's a long winded answer where it's like, I want to make sure you know that I don't care what the percentages are as long as they're intentional, where I'm going to give you targets of where to be healthy cash wise. But if you make the conscious decision to say, I want to pour more gasoline on the fire because we of the good cash position we're already in. I'm all in favor of that, of like, then that's intentional reinvesting versus throw money, you know, throw money out the window and hopefully it, you know, I catch it on the way down or something. So there yeah, you go. Fair, certainly fair point. A lot of knowledge uh, you just dropped there, David. Um, and, you know, good, good counterpoint on setting things up from the beginning. There's, you know, I guess I would, you know, maybe you thought that that would be too much for people to think about, but like you just broke it down where it can be simple, right? Like I'm Maybe That's just, where I give a cheat sheet too. At the end here, I'm going to give you access to my book and a cheat sheet. It's literally one page. Here's the first things to do. If you have one property or a thousand properties, like here's the first couple steps because this stuff is not being talked about. I had to make it as simple as possible. The second page is literally a visual walkthrough. So it's like, if you're a visual learner, it's like, here's the picture. Like here's where it comes in. Here's how you move the money. And here's how often you do it. It's like, I want it to be very simple because it is. Most people feel like, I'm drinking from a fire hose here because no one talks about this. This is not like, oh, this is another marketing method or this is another this or that, like something that they're used to. It's like, this is a little bit new concept and I'm making finance try to be simple in your life. And it's like, I want it to be simple. We're talking about bank accounts that you set up and we're talking about just moving money, which you already do, like at this point. So it's like, that's where I want you to be able to harness a system with it. You're going to put in the systems to have great rentals. Like if you listen to Zach and Adam, like they're teaching you how to retire from your rentals. And that includes processes, systems, finding the best tenant, you know, like that type of thing. You have processes for all of that. When a dollar comes in, I also want you to know, I know what to do with that dollar. I've got a process system for the dollars that come in. And that's why it's so important and having it man, like I do. I had one guy that I was interviewing on a podcast and he said, if I would have set up Profit first from the first property that I ever did, I'd have $5 million more in my account. Like he calculated it. He'd been in the business for like 12 years. He's like, dang it, I wish I would have had this from day one. And that's why I'm so aggressive on like, I don't care how big or small you are. I want you to be more profitable on your next deal. So that way you get into that habit and it becomes a habit no matter where you are. And then 10 years later, you say, man, I'm glad I listened to David back then because look at how further down the road we are, how big our profit percentage is or whatever it might be. So what, uh, as you're getting started, how, what software do you kind of recommend people look into? I mean, it sounds like you recommend more than just a Google spreadsheet, which I know a lot of people utilize for it. And if you had to narrow it down just a a few things that people need to go out and set up, um, what would those things be? So for profit first, you don't need much. You need just a spreadsheet and bank accounts. If you want more of the accounting side, which I I know you guys, like everyone puts us into the bookkeeping accounting like bucket. And I'm like, I hate that stuff, honestly. Like our CFOs manage it and make sure we're the glue for it. But like, I want to do the stuff that's fun. What do, what puts more money in your pocket? But as far as software, I, if you're just starting out, Google Sheets is good. You know, like if you've got one or two properties, probably don't need much more than that and have to invest in QuickBooks online at 50 bucks a month or whatever. If you want to take it to the next level and you know I'm going to go after my second, third, fourth, fifth, it's time to put it in QuickBooks online. That's like the CRM of your money. You've got CRMs, right, for everything else, for the leads that come in and the tenants and like that type of thing. Like you're going to have those types of systems. You might as well have a system for money. I use QuickBooks online and recommend it because it's uh, definitely the the gorilla in the room. And it's def- and it's got a lot of it's got a, a lot better over the years, too. And for the reporting. Those would be, that would be like some of the first ones. Then if you get a little bit bigger, there's expense management softwares like Ramp that make it very easy, even easier than QuickBooks to manage. Like here, I take a picture of my receipt and boom, 
I send a text message and then it's done. I don't have to think about opening up an app and trying to line the receipt up and all that. It's like there's some things that have made that type of thing as a business owner way easier too. It's called ramp.com. Um, I'm pretty sure it's still free. It's like a free software. They just charge for any of the times you use like checks or, you know, bill pay or something like that. So those are some of the ones that we recommend to make your life easier on the, the financial end. But if you're small, you could start with Google Sheets and then graduate to QuickBooks Online once you start to scale and grow. David, let's um, take this a little bit to the next step and talk about yeah. your active business with Simple CFO and fractional um, fractional CFOs. How, how does that work and what is it? Okay. So everyone knows bookkeeper, CPA. We can put those in a bucket. I'll let me equate it to a hospital. You've got the hospital that's the IRS. You know, like that's a, you know, the IRS is the hospital. You've got the bookkeeper who's like the nurse who's checking your chart every day, who's like making sure your day-to-day is good. You've got the CPA who's off in the, his own wing or her own wing, kind of like the tax, you know, they're the the specialist, the surgeon. They're going to cut your foot off usually, you know, like that's the one you don't usually want to go and see. Then you've got the CFO who's more like a private doctor, doesn't work for the hospital, works for you, comes to your house to check on you. How are your vital signs? Are you exercising? Like how are we making sure that you as a person and as a business owner are healthy all around? So that's where the CFO is more of a financial leader and a financial department head than, you know, like just another financial person that you just abdicate all financial responsibility to. It's more of a financial guide and coach to make sure, number one, the first three things we do with every business, we call laying the financial foundation, make sure you have a good bookkeeping system process in person. You need numbers in place, and we're going to help you manage that and make sure you have those things in place if you don't already. Number two, we implement profit first to make sure you put more money in your pocket because profit first is about intentionality with every dollar. Then we set up a dashboard. We set up a dashboard for you that looks at, here's what you're making, spending, keeping, and where's the issue? Where's the yellow or red lights? Are you not making enough? Are you not spending in the right place to really make what you want and then keep at the end of the day? Are you keeping what you want to from your business? So that's how we operate and have that person to make sure that the financial department's taken care of. You're becoming a smarter and savvier business owner of because we also teach people, how do you read the profit and loss? How do you read the balance sheet if they don't know how to do that? And then and then going over that with them to make decisions. So that's what we do with our business, what the CFO does. They're really more of a financial leader on the team. So this is a scenario where, um, you know, well, first of all, if someone's just getting started and they're not at the point where they can hire in a, even a fractional CFO, yeah. they can they can apply the, the concepts like that you teach. In exactly. The book, right? That's why I wrote then, the book. And then as they grow their business, this is a scenario where like, maybe you don't actually have to hire a full on CFO because that's a huge, that's a huge that's payroll a expense, one. right? And maybe yeah. you don't need someone 40 hours a week, but this is a scenario. I mean, how does this work? Someone comes in and is the advisor, they're giving, they're going through the fundamentals of bookkeeping with you and giving you some maybe thoughts on business and, and helping you understand and evaluate where your money is going, but you're paying them probably, I mean, I, is there like a set of fee and then you're paying them on like yeah. hourly? How does that work? Yeah, it's set up and then monthly, depending on how big you are. We do have a, one for people that are newer, like 250000 and below. That's more of like a 90-day program to just lay the foundation in their business, you know, like profit first, the bookkeeping, that type of thing, and give them a dashboard. But then from there, if they're if you're big than $500,000, you know, a year in, in revenue, and that's what you're bringing in, then usually we have recurring programs of, okay, this is now a part-time person on your team, like a part-time leader. So that's what you also mentioned, like what are other people that are successful that I see out there that's not even tied to financial, usually it's having some type of business operating system like Traction, the book Traction from Gino Wickman, EOS, that operating system, or there's other ones out there scaling up, Burn Harnish, Empire. Like there's several types of operating systems. But when you get that, when you get bigger, you're going to have leaders on the team. So it's like, this is now that leader for the financial department. Usually it's monthly recurring, you know, to keep them on there and making sure that you're actually bringing more home and putting more in your pocket. Love it. All right. Cool. All right. Now, uh, really appreciate you joining us today. Um, but what's uh, what are the next steps for you? Like kind of where, where are you growing from here? I like where we're growing. We're growing rapidly. We keep adding CFOs and team members because there's such a need out there because so many people are just spinning their wheels, making money and feeling broke. So I'm going to stay with this for many years. I'm a man of focus too. That's why as much as I love real estate, why I even sold the stuff I did I saw in our business, why did we go down, you know, like doing all those deals a month? We were spread out. We were spread out doing too many exit strategies in the real estate game and spread out over too many territories and states. It's like 
and I never wanted to do that again. So my next step is to keep going deeper, keep helping more people to help different industries and really get this this concept, this thing that I've seen change little lives and like businesses and people going out of business to now having these cash reserves. So now I'm getting the questions versus where's all my money going to like, where do I put this money? Like, where do I get the best return for it? You know, because I just don't want it sitting. I don't want a bunch of money sitting there. So it's like much rather have those issues. So that's where I'm going. I'm probably going to write another book within the next year and get that out there as well too. So a couple of things, but I just want to get this out there as much as possible because it is, I've just seen the transformation so many people have had as business owners. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, David. The website is simplecfo.com. If you go to that website, you can order the book. You can schedule a call. You can Do you see- mind if I give the actual link for the download to the cheat sheet? Because it's like, here's the first couple steps with videos, walk through, like make it easy. It's simplecfo.com forward slash gift. And you can download that. It also has a link to my ebook and audio book. So if you want those versions, the print book, I, you got to get on Amazon. But if you want the ebook or audio book, it's on that link as well, the cheat sheet. Because at the cheat sheet at the top, I say, I know a book is a long, is a big commitment. So here's the first steps if you just want to start implementing it and see more profitability right away. But if you have questions, that uh, that book, you know, like if you want to deep dive into it, it, has a lot of details, especially if you're listening to this and you're building a portfolio. I have a lot of sections in there about if you're holding real estate, how to apply it to that what to be thinking about, how to manage the cash flow, and like where to start, and what are those first steps in there too. All right, well, fantastic. Even better, that's simplecfo.com slash gift. Uh, You can get everything he just talked about right there. David, again, really appreciate you spending the time with us today. If you want to start acquiring those properties to actually uh, run numbers on and become successful with, you can find those right over at renttoretirement.com. That's renttoretirement.com. You can schedule a time to talk with us. You can see our inventory and see how we can uh, best help you get on the path to uh, your financial freedom. And as always, don't forget, if you have any questions you want Zach or myself to answer on future episodes, send an email to podcasts at renttoretirement.com. That's podcast at renttoretirement.com. Really appreciate the time you spent educating yourself today. We'll talk to you on the next episode. Thanks for watching the Rent to Retirement YouTube channel. Check out some of our other videos, like this one, or this one here.